The MSI GeForce RTX 30 Series Ventus 3X graphics cards are ready to power your next-gen gaming rig. Based on Nvidia's Ampere architecture, these new cards provide you the highest frame rates with stunning ray tracing effects. The all-new Ventus 3X cooling solution features Torx Fan 3.0. Each fan has alternating traditional and dispersion fan blades that accelerate air into the heatsink. Zero Frozer technology maintains silence as long as possible and the fans will only start spinning if temperatures are high enough. Instead of traditional oval heat pipes, these cards have precision machined core pipes for maximum contact with the GPU. The heatsink is equipped with deflectors that not only increase surface area but direct more airflow to the hotter parts of the cooler. Looking to the back side of these cards, we show two possible cooling backplates. Our highest end cards are equipped with a metal backplate with heat pipes underneath. Other models have a graphene composite backplate. Both these backplates are well built to cool the backside of the graphics card. The metal anti-bending strap and bundled support bracket make sure your card is properly reinforced, even during transportation. The MSI Dragon Center software lets you fully control your graphics card. Squeeze out even more performance using MSI Afterburner with the OC scanner feature for safe and easy overclocking. If you want to learn more about the MSI GeForce RTX 30 Ventus 3X series graphics cards, please visit the product page. Thank you for watching and happy gaming. Now I'm super excited to be doing this overview video on the Sapphire Nitro RX 6800 XT here. The only downside is, is that I don't get to keep the card after I finish my video. So let's get started with the specs first of the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 6800 XT, built on the new and improved AMD RDNA 2 gaming architecture using the 7 nanometer process. It has a boost clock of up to 2360 MHz and a game clock of 2110 MHz. The game features 72 compute units and has 128MB of the all new AMD Infinity Cache and 16GB of dedicated GDDR6 memory. The card can handle up to 4 displays and supports one HDMI 2.1 port and also 3 display ports at version 1.4. The card requires a 2 8 pin power connector and the recommended power supply is 750 watts. There is a direct dual BIOS switch that can be found on the side of the card, so if you ever happen to push your manual overclocks a little bit too far, you always have a backup BIOS to revert to. The Nitro Plus series has always been very aesthetically pleasing and can blend into most case designs with ease, but it also supports ARGB, making it even easier to get your custom lighting themes. The card's form factor will fit into most cases, the only thing to consider is that it can take up to 3 expansion slots. Sapphire are always finding new ways to innovate on their already top of the class cooling solutions and these cards are no exceptions to that rule with the new and improved hybrid fan blade design that helps the card increase downward air pressure reducing your GPU and memory temperatures by 3 degrees while still keeping those fan noises low. And yes, the fans still feature Sapphire's Quick Fan Connect that enables you to quickly replace a fan head without having to return the car to the manufacturer for repair. Other improvements to the cooler include brand new fin designs to improve noise levels, but also accelerate centralized airflow around the GPU to dissipate the heat more efficiently. The memory modules also see improvements with an additional heat pipe and improved thermal pads to deliver better thermal performance. Thanks to the new RDNA 2 architecture, these cards are jam-packed full of exciting new features such as Smart Access Memory, or SAM for short. This utilizes the bandwidth of the PCI Express to remove the bottlenecks and increase performance that enables you to access all the memory on your GPU. Usually systems are limited on how much VRAM they can use at one given time, but thanks to RDNA 2 and the new Ryzen 5000 series CPUs, you can get the most out of your GPU's memory. Now it's important to note that not every game will see a benefit when using this feature and the performance boost you do see will vary from title to title. To take advantage of these features you'll need an AMD 5000 series CPU, an AMD Radeon RX 6000 series graphics card and a 500 series AM4 motherboard. We also see hardware accelerated ray tracing introduced in the 6000 series of cards, giving more dramatic and realistic lightings in titles that support ray tracing. If you'd love to immerse yourself in new worlds and environments, this feature has you covered. 
Gaming at either high frame rates or high resolution can put a lot of strain on our memory bandwidth, and this is where Infinity Cache really lends a helping hand. Based on our testing, it's not only looking like Infinity Cache is able to ensure that we avoid bandwidth related bottlenecks, but having so much cache so close to the cores appears to be giving us an incredibly smooth and stable experience helping reduce micro stutters. Now AMD's Fidelity Effects is an open source image quality toolkit comprising of seven different solutions so far available to developers to implement into their games, optimizing for AMD RDNA and RDNA2 architectures. These include contrast adaptive sharpening, ambient inclusion, variable shading, screen space reflections, denoiser, HDR mapper, and downsampler. Now you can learn more about these features on the AMD website. There it shows you some great examples of how the software is actually implemented. Also important to note is that AMD will soon be releasing a new feature called Super Resolution that takes a low resolution image and upscales it to a high resolution using machine learning to help performance so make sure you look out for that in the future. Anti-lag and boost mode are primarily designed to improve input latency to keep your mouse feeling smooth and reactive at all times. Boost mode will dramatically reduce your visual quality in favor of FPS. This applies when turning your mouse from side to side, looking in new areas of the map, etc. But if you're running in a straight line or using very little mouse movement, your quality will sharpen up to your default value that you set in game. Anti-lag feature works best if your GPU is under heavy intense loads. In these situations, the CPU will be processing your mouse inputs ahead of your GPU, which can cause that horrible drift and lagging feeling that no one likes. By enabling anti-lag feature in your games, you'll be able to significantly reduce input latency, keeping your mouse nice and smooth and more natural feeling. Let's do a quick benchmark using Watchdog Legions. We're going to do a series of tests starting with no bells and whistles at first with the three standard resolutions, 1080p, 1440p and 4K on ultra settings. Here we score 106 FPS at 1080p, 81 FPS at 1440p and 47 FPS at 4K. I then turned on smart access memory and then ran the same benchmarks and we do see a small FPS boost of one or two frames. As I said earlier, this feature really varies depending on title to title. So some games can have 10% performance boost, whereas others have zero. And finally, we did the test again, this time using ray tracing, of course, and we used the high preset on the ray tracing feature, but everything else remained the same on ultra settings at the same resolutions. To summarize, the Sapphire Nitro Plus RX 6800 XT is a rasteration god. It pumps out amazing performance at 1080p, 1440p, and even 4K. And it's literally topping many of the charts as the most powerful graphics card across many different games and different resolutions. And I think it's safe to say that beyond the raw performance of the card, the most anticipated thing that gamers are wanting is ray tracing. And the good news is, is that it's finally here. And to be honest, considering that this is AMD's first generation, it's looking pretty competent. In AMD particular titles such as Dirt 5 and Godfall, the numbers are promising. The only thing that we're really lacking right now is a way to boost ray tracing performance without losing too much visual quality, which is why we can't wait to see what happens in AMD's Fidelity FX suite, in particular, Super Resolution. This exciting feature allows games to render at sub-native resolutions and then upscale each frame using machine learning in order to maximize image quality. This should, in theory, rival native resolution whilst also being much more efficient. The problem is we don't actually have access to this feature at the time recording, but uh, you know, it's something to look forward to in the future. Simply put, this card is amazing and it's super exciting to see how well it performed. Now, if this video has piqued your interest and you're looking at a Sapphire graphics card, make sure to uh, do your own research, make sure to go watch loads of reviews before going out and buying, and I hope this video has helped you in your consideration. Hello everyone, today we're going to explain the key technology behind Max Covered Cooling the focus of our latest Aorus RTX 30 series graphics cards. The RTX 30 cards are energy hungry beasts. Both the RTX 3080 and 3090 consume over 300 watts at their peak, which means more heat will be generated when handling your favorite AAA game titles or heavy load tasks such as 3D rendering. That's the reason why we focus on improving cooling for the Aorus RTX 30 series. After all, only with superior thermal management can you get the best performance out of your GPU. So let's jump in into the Max Covered fan design. There are three major technological components. Number one, stacked fans. Number two, the wind claw. And number three, alternated spinning. 
The stacked fan is the most important feature under the max covered cooling system. On traditional graphics cards, there is a three fan design. There's a space left between each fan called the dead zone. This part of the card receives little to no airflow, resulting in heat accumulation and affecting performance over time. The Oris design team came up with a unique solution. To make it better, we made it bigger, creating the largest fans on the GPU ever. By enlarging the fan size and by stacking the outer fans over the middle one, we eliminated these dead zones, guaranteeing 100% airflow coverage over the entire heatsink. Next is the wind claw. It's a stationary fan blade under the left and right fans, which channels more air around the fan to the heatsink, increasing both the airflow pressure and thermal efficiency. Lastly, alternated spinning is the tech that we've been using since the GTX 10 series. However, when three fans rotate in the same direction, there will be turbulence between each fan, which negatively causes heat dissipation. We've solved this by alternating the direction of the middle fan thereby reducing turbulence and promising better heat dissipation. We hope you enjoyed our explainer video behind Max Covered Cooling on our Oris RTX 30 series graphics cards. If you want to learn more about how our cooling will fetch benchmarks and performance, stay tuned for our Oris RTX 30 series launch event on September 17th. Thanks for watching. Hi everyone, I'm Chris, and welcome to the official unboxing of the ROG Strix RTX 3060. This is going to be the first graphics card that I unbox here, and I'm so excited to take you inside the box. The Strix RTX 3060 is the newest member of the Ampere GPU family, with 3584 CUDA cores and 12 GB of GDDR6. Best of all, it's available in stores today. Regardless of what games you're playing, the Strix RTX 3060 is going to be a perfect fit for playing high refresh games at 1080p or tackling 1440p and 4K gaming with solid frame rates. Now let's open it up and see what's inside. Alright, first off, we have a little packet here, and if we open that up, we're going to find a little thank you card, quick setup guide, and most importantly, this great little collector's card to show that you are one of the few that has a Strix RTX 3060. Now, under here are the goodies. We've got a couple of Velcro cable ties here, but most importantly, this beauty of a card right here. Let's take it out of the packaging. And there it is in all its glory. The Strix 3060 is a 2.7 slot GPU with a new angular black and silver design found on other members of the Strix family. That extra size expands the cooling surface to make the most of the three Axial Tech fans. Now speaking of fans, we've improved upon our previous Axial Tech fan design, including a reversed central fan that cuts down on turbulence and increases airflow to keep your card running cool even under the heaviest loads. On the rear of the card is the vented backplate that doesn't just help prevent the GPU from sagging, it also looks good in the process with an addressable RGB ROG logo. The wide vent allows hot air to be forced out the rear, where chassis exhaust fans can easily expel it. Here you can also see the two PWN Fan Connect headers that'll let you attach and control chassis fans for additional cooling flexibility. This is also where the dual BIOS switch lives, 
Moving this switch lets you effortlessly swap between silent and performance modes without any software. The back panel sports a pair of native HDMI 2.1 ports for high refresh gaming at up to 8K. You'll also find three DisplayPort 1.4a ports along the stainless steel bracket. Along the top, you'll see another RGB addressable lighting zone along with a single 8-pin power connector. And while they're difficult to see, the Strix 3060 features premium alloy chokes, solid polymer capacitors, and an array of high current power stages to ensure reliable power delivery over a long lifespan. The ROG Strix RTX 3060 is available in stores today, so check below for links on where you can buy it. And we generally recommend pairing this GPU with a power supply rated for either 650 or 750 watts. So be sure to check out our Strix and Tough Gaming PSUs in the links below. If you like the video, please click on the like button, write a comment, and subscribe to my channel.